technical issues. Thank you, staff, for fixing those. So call the meeting to order, and we'll ask council for approval of the agenda as presented. Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Casper. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay. Next item is the adoption of Council and Committee of the Whole meeting minutes. The May 9th Committee of the Whole meeting. Move Moved by Councillor Casper, seconded by Councillor Ray, I believe. Oh, Berger. Okay. <laughs> Any errors or missions, comments, questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. May 9th, regular council meeting. Moved by Councillor Loggins. Seconded by Councillor Casper. Any errors or missions? Councillor Parkinson. On page 12 and 13, it shows that under RI2 that... Um, Councillor Pearson opposed the motion, but then on MB1 and C1, it shows that he wasn't present. Do you recall stepping away or anything, Councillor Pearson? No. I came late to the meeting, and I think the way I read the minutes was is that it showed that I was absent in, in the first part. If I remember reading these minutes, because I saw that as well. But I was here for the... Uh, all right, two. All right, one. I believe. Yes, sorry, two. You were here. Yes. Yes. It was the very first motion that they had. At the very beginning. Yeah. Okay. Amended. Okay. So that uh, will be corrected then. Okay. Anything else? All those in favor as amended? Opposed? Carried unanimously. And then a May 11th special council meeting. Move approval by Councillor Casper, seconded by Councillor Pearson. Any errors or missions, comments, questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay. Receipt of draft committee, council committee minutes for information, May 11th, Community Grants Committee meeting. Move receipt by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Parkinson. Any discussion? Councillor Berger? Yes, thank you. On page 21, um, just under the recommendation for the Souk River Bluegrass Festival. Yes. Um, I didn't actually, when I, I made the motion to recommend to go forward, but it was just for, um, we didn't know what the exact site costs were, so I didn't quote an actual number. So it says uh, 4746 but I didn't actually give a number. So I don't know if that's relevant or not. Just because I think we were going to look into what um, actual costs were. Do you want me to shut that door? Yes, thank you. Councillor Ray? Uh, yeah, and, and I guess um, because these are just for information, uh, the um, correction of them would have to be made at the next community grant oh, committee right. okay. meeting, would they not? Well, Council's going to be approving the grants tonight anyway, so I mean, oh. they can approve for whatever amount. These okay. are just your minutes. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? All those in favor? <clears throat> Motion's carried. Thank you. Well, first off, we'd like to welcome one of our delegation, our only delegation this evening, and that would be the Suit Transition Town Society regarding the Category B grant application. Um, welcome, Mr. Bateman. Um, you have five minutes. Okay. And if you could please turn on the microphone. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you all. Um, I'm Jeff Bateman, president of Transition Souk, and with me tonight is Michael Takon over here, our, our treasurer and past president. I'd like to begin by thanking Councillor Ray, uh, who in her capacity as chairperson of the Community Grants uh, Review Committee, kindly gave us a second chance uh, to make our pitch uh, for Category B funding this year. You could easily have sent us packing with a better luck next time message. However, you didn't, and we certainly appreciate this second opportunity. Um, Councillor Ray, along with your committee members, Councillor Berger, uh, Colleen Heenan, and Michelle Stratford gave us some excellent feedback and schooled us well. I trust we've addressed these concerns in the revised submission, prepared again by our transition colleague, Sophie Hagens. So to sum up quickly, um, we're seeking funds from the district for three related projects that we're collectively billing as the Great Reskilling. We aim to educate people and inspire them to make changes in their lives. 
uh, via these three projects. The first is a calendar of reskilling events and workshops taking place at a variety of places around town, the Souk Library, Country Market, Cast Iron Farm, and the Casa Garden included. Our audiences will range from the very young to adults of all ages. The skills taught will include upcycling, how to identify wild edibles, do-it-yourself bike repair, the art of fermentation, seed saving and composting. The second event is a Souk Green Homes and Energy Efficient Building Tour. And this is set for July 24th and will feature stops at Harborside Co-Housing, the Souk Nation, and various private homes throughout the district. And the third project under this great Reskilling Umbrella is a transition suit reskilling fair on a Sunday in late August, ideally at Sun River. So our first application was somewhat light on confirmed details. Um, so we've connected as many dots as possible uh, for each of these three projects. And you'll find full summaries on pages 34 to 39 of tonight's agenda. Uh, turning to our budget on page 33, so a few points related to it. Uh, as a grassroots community organization in Souk with very modest cash reserves at our disposal, we're seeking approximately one-third of our total budget for these projects from the district. We're also seeking grants from the BC Real Estate Foundation, BC Hydro, and Mountain Equipment Co-op. We like to always keep ticket prices as low as possible, always by donation, pay what you can, nobody turned away is our philosophy. However, we do expect to generate revenues from each event. The Green Home Tour, for example, will be ticketed, at, but at a nice price, perhaps $10 per family, or carload to encourage carpooling. Um, if we do indeed receive a district grant at this time, we'll be submitting expenses uh, related to promotion, printing, signage, and venue rental all of which we believe qualify for Category B funding. Finally, I'd like to note that we play fair and by the rules. For instance, we received $300 from the committee last fall for the rental of an awareness film night uh, film screening. The film cost less to rent than anticipated, and so we returned 40% of the grant uh, when we submitted our report earlier this year. So that's it. Thanks for the second kick at the can. Any questions? Any questions to Mr. Bateman? No? Seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Thank Bateman. You. Okay, moving along with our public question and comment period. Um, if you could, I'd like to welcome any member of the public forward. Uh, if you could please state your name and address for the record, and it's in regards to any item on tonight's agenda. Gail Hall, 2517 Sook River Road. Um, I think I have a bit of the agenda here. Uh, RA3, park maintenance contracts. Um, I find the report to be insufficient in that, um, well, first of all, the 4,000 that we're supposed to be going to save. Um, it's peanuts to you folks, so I don't know why we're excited about it. Sat in this room, listened to the chamber, listened to council, listened to the people talk about small business in Souk and folks trying to get ahead with a small business and find that right here you're going to cut it out from under them by taking on more staff. So um, I'm opposed to that aspect, but the numbers here that we're going to be paying out. Uh, what are we going to use for a building to put these machines in and maintenance and all that good stuff? There's no mention there of a building. So you're either going to have to build something or you've got something that we don't, we're not aware of. Um, there's insurance, there's maintenance, there's licensing, and all those things need to be added in. When they are, you won't be ahead you'll be behind and uh, I think you need to take another look at this and remember that um, small business depends on having the work and we don't need any more staff thank you thank you Ms. Hall are there any other members of the public that would like to speak to an item on the agenda Okay. 
Okay, Jeff Bateman, 7083 Briarwood. Um, I'm referring tonight to tonight's council package, uh, page 115 to 16, and this is notification from the Canada 150 Community Infrastructure Program. And there is a note uh, there that uh, up until June 21st, um, applicants can apply for projects that support clean growth economy and that includes energy efficiency upgrades. So I'm speaking now as chair of the Climate Action Change Committee, and we have uh, proposed a number of, um, number of projects, an energy audit of the municipal hall, uh, solar panels on the municipal hall rooftop, solar panel canopy covering a portion of the municipal hall parking lot, or one or more electric vehicle charging stations at the hall. So I, given the deadline is June 21st, I'm hoping that staff time is available to research, cost out, and file a grant application for one or more of these projects. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bateman. Any other members of the public? Seeing none, okay, we'll move on to RA1. Uh, this is in the reports requiring action, the residential strata title conversion, and okay, the recommendation is basically that council approve strata plan EPS 3549 for a residential strata title conversion of a two-family dwelling located at 2072 Dover Street. Moved by Councillor Berger. Seconded by Councillor Loggins. Are, is there any discussion on the motion? Any further questions from staff? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you. RA2 is our Community Grant Review Committee recommendations. So in the report to Council, we have the committee recommendations. Uh, Council, we have the option of doing them one by one or doing them in a block? I'd like to know what your preference is. Councillor Ray. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Your Worship. I would suggest that we do them one by one. Okay. Um, there's uh, some information on one and of course now we also have um, to consider uh, transition suits um, uh, requests this evening as well. Okay. Very good. So we'll start then with um, thank you, Councillor Ray, and thank you um, both Councillor Ray Berger and your committee for all your work on this. Uh, we will then begin with the Communica Dialogue Resolution Services. The, the motion there is that Council not award a Category B community grant. And I'm just wondering if I if I may if um, if. People want if council wants any clarification. Otherwise, um, I'll just move uh, each yep. one, and then if there's discussion or a question, um, then then we can uh, either councillor Berger or I could answer it. Okay. Councillor Parkinson. So we're just having discussion on the first one right now. Yes. So I would like to see that the Communica dialogue receive financial assistance. I know that it is felt that is downloading from the government, but without our help, these people will fall through the cracks. Uh, the service saw 12 families come to this group, and five of them were actually from Souk. So they do look after Souk people, so I would like to see us support them in some way. Okay, can respond. Council Ray? Uh, yes, uh, the, um, the request is basically for wages, which does not come under the Category B grant. And uh, that was the reason why, um, not just because it is a downloading, uh, because it was for wages, it's not covered under the category B. It's for capital items. Thank you. Okay, would someone like to make a motion, please? I'll make a motion um, to follow the recommendation of the committee to not fund. Second. Okay. Moved by Councillor Berger and seconded by Councillor Ray, and that's just uh, in keeping with the recommendation. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay, our next one is the Harmony Project Society of British Columbia, and the, mo the recommendation from the committee is to that Council award the Harmony Project Society of BC a Category B grant in the amount of 7000 and I'll move the motion. Moved by Councillor Ray. Second. Seconded by Councillor Parkinson. Any discussion on the motion? 
All those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Next is the Rotary Club of Souk. The committee recommends that council award the Rotary Club of Souk a Category B grant in the amount of three thousand. I'll move. The Moved motion. by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Parkinson. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Scouts Canada. The committee recommends that council award Scouts Canada, Cascadia Council, Camp Bernard a, a Category B grant in the amount of five thousand. I'll move the motion. Moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Casper. Any discussion? Councillor Ray? Uh, yes, just uh, for, for Mayor and Council. Uh, we did speak uh, to Scouts Canada and uh, requested that they um, look to other municipalities in the future uh, for funding because the, the children come from all across the South Island and their funding has been in the past strictly with the District of Souk in terms of municipalities and felt that, uh, that they should be uh, spreading their requests uh, further abroad given the amount that the District of Souk has already contributed. Okay. Councillor Pearson. Yes, uh, through, the, through the chair to uh, Councillor Ray, what is the $5,000 for? Uh, the $5,000 is to help with the renovation in the dining room. Mm -hmm. Is it is is, uh, is our friend uh, in the Juan de Fuca area where the where this Camp Bernard is located assisting in any way? My recollection is yes, and uh, they also have a uh, Canada 150 grant, I believe. I'll have to I have to go I have to take a peek. Um, Councillor Berger, you do you recall whether or not they? We well, don't have my package with me, but it's a very extensive renovation. I believe they're put. They found. Well over thirty thousand of their own funds to put into it, okay. so the five thousand from us is just an, an additional grant to do the whole dining room. Yeah, no, I was specifically asking about no. the uh, one of few collectors. It, so. it wasn't five thousand dollars; it was less, but there was a grant listed. Um, okay, thank you. No, if I can, correction on that. Sorry, uh, no, the Wanda Fuca uh, district is not um, involved in funding. Uh, the request for the District of Souk is 5000 15000 from Victoria Foundation, 73000 from the Canada 150, and then they have pending from the Pacific Jamboree, which um, is also coming back to Souk, 25000 10000 pending from the BC Real Estate Foundation, and another 8000 pending um, from the Vancouver Foundation, and then 35000 out of their savings. So there is a considerable amount of money coming from other funders if they're all approved. Councillor Loggins. Sorry, just to clarify, uh, if I may, uh, it was for the building, they're renovating a building, is that what you were? The kitchen. Um, does the, I, I don't think that the Canada 150 grants cover um, capital costs. Uh, it has an infrastructure program. So there may oh, be separate one there, from there may okay. be different programs. Gotcha. So um, they're actually confirmed for the seventy-three thousand. And if I remember correctly, uh, Councillor Berger, they have to come up with the seventy-three thousand to match it mm -hmm. to get it. So um. okay. Any other questions from Council? Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. The Souk Saltwater Series Committee recommends that Council award the Souk Saltwater Series a Category B grant in the amount of $3,500. I'll move the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Parkinson. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Souk Region Community Health Network. The Committee recommends that Council award the Souk Region Community Health Network a Category B grant in the amount of $7,000. Moved by Councillor Parkinson. Second. Seconded by Councillor Berger. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Souk River Bluegrass Festival. Uh, and the committee recommends that Council award the Souk River Bluegrass Festival a Category B grant in the amount of 4746 for the purposes of site expenses. Councillor Ray? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, at the time of the meeting, uh, when we were speaking with the Bluegrass Festival, uh, and I'll speak for myself, um, my understanding in that amount when they identified 4,746 for site expenses, that that was the funding that was going to go to the Sioux Community Association. And um, afterwards, I, we learned, um, and I have given you, uh, each of council, a breakdown of, um, of the amounts. And uh, in fact, that there were a number of other items 
um, that I don't support. And so I would like to um, put forward uh, a new motion, um, and that is uh, to recommend that council award probably, sh we probably in terms of procedure should um, address this as the recommendation from the committee. You don't have to. The motion's not actually on the floor. It was only okay. brought up by the mayors. Okay. So I'd like to amend that to from 4,746 to 1,930. And so that um, would be the um, uh, Suit Community Association site rental, uh, the incidentals that are charged for hydro, uh, the chairs used the clubhouse, the building, those, those three items of 1,050, 500, and 380 come to 1,930. Um, the, the, other, the other one piece uh, for discussion here at the council table is uh, the Sioux Community Association does ask uh, the Bluegrass Festival to provide porta potties. Uh, for those who are not camping because it puts quite a demand on their uh, bathrooms and their and the sewer system and uh, So there's an additional 720 that might want to be considered or Of course, there's the full amount, but that my the motion I'm making is just for the 1930 Seconder for the motion Oops. is there a seconder for the motion second. seconded by Councillor Berger and then to the motion Councillor Berger Yes, thank you. Um, and the discussions that we had around the grant committee table was um, the I sort of changed, and the reason why I wanted to bring it up in the minutes is because that I didn't have that in, that figure in my motion because I actually changed what their request was altogether. So the request that came to the grant committee was for um, to help with promotions and bans. And under the terms of reference for our grant committee, we can't pay any wages or we can't pay for a ban to come. Um, they'd come before us in previous years asking for the same thing, and, and last year we just denied them in totality, and they didn't receive anything. So um, in our discussions with what we're going to fund and what, what, rec what recommendations we were going to make, my suggestion was maybe we could help them with their site costs. Um, and so I sort of looked to the audience and said, I hope that you don't mind me offering this, but you know, can we look at helping with, with site costs, which is a capital item which would qualify. Um, under our terms of reference for our grant and I was under the exact same impression that we were going to pay just the rental for the site so um, There was discussions went back and forth that that 4,000 seemed quite high and then so we asked for a, a further breakdown So in looking at the line items, um, I'm I Second and we'll be voting in favor of um, Councillor Ray's recommendation Councillor Logginson Parkinson I'm looking at the um sheet that Councillor Ray passed around uh, just before the meeting here and on the last page it's the 2016 site expenses summary and when I added these up so these all made sense to me except for the ticket service charge um, so taking that away it would be 4330 and so I would not support the motion based on that so to clarify You wouldn't support the 1930, but would prefer to see a higher amount allocated based on the amounts here. Yeah, because we were talking about the reason being uh, to drop it down was because of items that were not capital costs. Okay. Yeah. So I see those as uh, fitting into that, except for the ter the ticket service charge, and then that would total up to 4330. Okay, Councillor Parkinson. And I would also agree with Councillor Loggins. When I look at this, I think that um, for one, sanitation should be included in that, seen as they're paying for the campgrounds, yet they can, cannot fulfill what the bluegrass needs to have there. And my understanding was also that they um, have to rent a tent, so I'm not sure what the cost was for the tent. So I would like to see a higher amount for the bluegrass because I think that they bring a lot of people in to Souk and it's a, an event that is really good for the community. Okay. Councillor Ray? Yes, uh, the, the committee um, uh, last year and the year before, uh, the, the concern is, is that if it's an event where you're paying to get into, 
that the responsibility is for is to be covered by the ticket cost. Um, you know, I, I I hear what you're saying, uh, but uh, I um, respectfully don't support that position. I think uh, power cables and stuff to accommodate the vendors, the liability insurance, a golf cart rental, um, other miscellaneous, to me moves away, I think, that those are the items that should be covered by a ticket cost. Um, so I, um, I, I would um, support including the sanitation of the porta potties because it is part of the site, although it's not the Souk uh, uh, Community Association. And if that were the will of the council, uh, that would be 2650 rather than 1930. Okay, so the motion is amended to 2650. Okay. That's, uh, is there a seconder for the amendment? I'll second that. Okay, moved, seconded by Councillor Pearson. So on the amendment, please. Councillor Loggins? I'm still not happy with the amount. If it was based, uh, I mean, if, if a decision was based on uh, ticket cost, covering the cost instead of us assisting with these events, then we should not have uh, just approved the Souk Salt Water Series either. Councillor Berger? Yes, thank you. And um, through you to Councillor Loggins, that, that, and that's been a discussion that the, the Community Grants Committee has had with um, another parameter for us is we're not, we're not allowed to recommend or support any ongoing costs. So what we've looked at is what, what are economic drivers for our community, what bring people to our community, and then how can we help with sort of a capital cost. But when it comes to events, as you know, we, there's lots of events within our community. If we start... I think we'd be, we'd, we'd get, find ourselves in some trouble if we start paying for every event where these events should be self-sustainable. And that's always, for the past three years, that's been the discussion, is that if we're going to hold an event and someone's going to come and pay a fee for that event, they eventually need to work towards becoming self-sustainable. So we tried to help the Bluegrass this year by saying, okay, whatever your rental fee for the campground um, and that was my intent in the recommendation, was just the fee for the campground. And that ha had unanimous support across the Grant Committee Board. Councillor Pearson? Um, yeah, I guess I, I was just going through the amounts here, and I guess there's, um, it says SCA incidentals. It says there's $500 in here, it says for hydro, and then it says their staffing in the words there. So, um, I think that should automatically fall out of the grant by the by the rules. It, it, I, there's a couple of things that are just not clear here. So um, I think it's a wonderful event, and I think that it's you know it's good that they've come up with a with a good proposal this year. And I think it's more than last year because I think it got turned down last year, if I remember correctly. And we did rent the site a few years back. If I remember that as well. Um, I think I, I think I'm pretty comfortable in that twenty six hundred twenty seven hundred dollar range if we take some of these things out. So, thank you, Councillor Ray. Well, I was just going to say that uh, the $500 that Councillor uh, Pearson is referring to is the charge back to um, the, the festival for the Sioux Community Association providing some people for security, checking people into the campground. So it's not wages like you would see under the Category A grant um, and, uh, and supplies. So it's a general charge back to the festival. Councillor Pearson? I guess in that air goes my point. Should that not be included in the rental? It is being included in the rental. Okay, it just Sorry. seems like it's, it, it's, it says SCA incidentals, right? It's just how it's just how the bluegrass wrote it up. Okay, yeah. Thank you. So basically, what my, my my recommendation was, and and I believe Councillor Berger is on the same page. Anything that is coming to the Sioux Community Association would be covered for the okay. site rental. It's all part and parcel they've just broken it down okay into okay each of the I understand now what you said thank you okay I'm falling a bit out of procedure here we have an amended um, we we're speaking to the motion that was added so I'm going to call the question on adding that additional amount in and then we can have the motion whole so all those in favor of the amended motion opposed that's carried unanimously so then the main motion has the funding of the 2650 is there any further discussion on the entirety of that motion um, I, I'm glad to see something going to the group. Um, 
I sort of I agree where with, with Councillor Loggins and Councillor Parkinson in that it is a good event. It's an economic driver, but I also know that we have some restrictions as to the policy of the community grant and the work that the committee does. But so you know I'm hopeful that the the 2650 will see this event occur in the community and not leave them short. But I do hear that some of these things should be covered by vendors and ticket sales. So we're almost halfway there. Any further discussion on this motion, the 2650? All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? It's carried unanimously. Okay. So our last one then is um, from the Tr Transition Town Society. We've received additional information um, through the delegation and the materials that were provided. Um, the question that I have was just what was the dollar amount that was being sought? 1200 1200 okay. So I'll just double check that, yes. I'll, I'll move the motion uh, for 1200 Okay, so the motion is to fund the Souk Transition Town Society, $1,200, moved and seconded by Councillor Ray and Councillor Casper. Councillor Logans? I just wanted to make a comment that the price per car, car load to encourage carpooling is brilliant. I wonder if there would be a reduction if you biked the whole thing. Maybe you, you would. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Not quite there, but, you know, as an incentive to encourage cycling, maybe. Okay, any further questions on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you very much, and thank you, committee, for your work on this. Our next one is RA3, the park maintenance contracts. There is a report with a recommendation from our CAO. Um, there was also some questions from the public. Um, and that is a question sort of that I had was where do we store all these, the equipment pieces? We'll store them at our public works yard. And if I may, yes. uh, to add a little more clarity, and, and my apologies to Mayor and Council for, for not being as clear as I could have with respect to this report. I take full responsibility for that. Um, the MIA covers our insurance. There okay. may be a slight increase to our premium, but uh, we're fully covered under them. Uh, and the maintenance um, is kind of buried in the operating supplies section of this report. So I should have peeled that out. My apologies to Ms. Gale Hall <laughs> for that omission. Okay. Councillor Casper. So um, my question then uh, relates to this. If there's going to be two full-time employees and two seasonal employees, does that mean that the district would have an opportunity to use the two full-time employees for other uh, uses and activities year-round outside of the regular landscaping maintenance period? That is correct. Okay. So uh, just speaking in favor of it, I think that it, it bodes well because the current contracts that we have are not uh, deemed, nor were they structured as being full-time equivalents. It was uh, predominantly seasonal and, um, and based on the needs of, of our park system. And if the grass isn't growing because of drought, then it doesn't have to be looked after. So then we don't have the provisions of our current contract arrangement to make use of those employees doing something else if it's outside the scope of their contract. But if we have two full-time employees and if they aren't mowing lawns like out there because if it's not growing, then they can do something else. Is that correct for staff? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ray, Councillor Park, then Parkinson. Yes. Um, thank you, and um, and I do. Uh, I'm not uh, often in favor in growing government um, and positions, um, but I think uh, in this case, um, given the challenges of um, of trying to maintain such a number of, of green spaces, and I, th I think one of the things that um, that's um, it's been challenging uh, in my time while I've been on council is uh, in terms of um, oversight of contracts that are run by the district, um, evaluations of those contracts, and uh, value for those contracts. And I think um, with um, a, a considerable amount of money, um, taxpayer money going out uh, 
in these uh, type of contracts that if there is a way to bring them in-house, uh, growing government as little as possible, uh, and that there are other opportunities to use them in other areas that um, would be a benefit, uh, then I would support the motion. Councillor Parkinson, then Pearson. Um, my question through you, Mayor, is what are the yearly salaries for two full-time FTs and the two seasonal employees for the six months? Thank you, through the Chair. Um, it is under the labour estimate at the very bottom of that chart at 199.180. Okay, and then um, I have a problem with not having the contracts and for it because many of them are, the majority of them are held by local residents that are all trying to make their living and living in our town. So we're going to be getting rid of, well, getting rid of not having a number of locals working now so we try to say that we want to keep everyone local we want them to be able to work here and spend their money here yet we appear to be taking their jobs away from them so for the four thousand dollar savings I really don't see that being a big savings over the time um, back to our CAO for response Yes, thank you. And, and the, the, the rationale for bringing this in-house is not strictly with respect to saving money. It's to provide the district with the flexibility it so desperately needs to address various areas when we have pressure points throughout the year. Um, having staff on, on, on board provides us with a lot more leeway in where we direct those resources as well. So it's going to be better service to the residents of Souk uh, for less money. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. Um, Councillor Pearson, then Loggins. Um, I think that um, th there's, there's valid points being discussed all around, and I think that the, uh, the critical piece for this is, is good management of, of those resources, because I don't think you have to pick up the paper very long to see where the government uh, payoffs and, and, and things, all these contracts are all extras. And those who are familiar with contracting out is, is where, where we lose money is, is in extras. And we, we, it's very hard to, to determine the parameters of a contract um, so specifically that, that we get every, every penny out of it. I think, um, again, the key to this is good management and good management practices to ensure that the resources are, are u utilized um, efficiently throughout the year and the extras and the response times and all that. This is a good program uh, because I, I, I've experienced it a few times now from district um, uh, people calling me and want something as simple as a branch cut because of the visibility coming out by a stop sign or a mirror installed or a dangerous tree. And by the time we get there, the hazard has already been taken care of by the neighbors or somebody else. And, and, and again, it puts us in a liable situation. So again, if we get, a, if we get good staff, the key is good staff and good management of, the, of those resources. So I'll be supporting the motion. Councillor Loggins. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions. I struggle with this because I know there are a lot of local business owners who um, rely on this, these contracts. Um, and I hope that if this does pass, that the people we hire are local as well, and perhaps the people who are servicing our contracts. Um, this is just an ignorant question, but is a garbage collection truck really only $40,000? <laughs> I feel like it would be a lot more but I don't know. Um, that kind of raises a flag for me um, and is exciting at the same time. I also was wondering um, what the communication and relationship was like between the staff and the contractors, and is it a case where we have uh, additional things that need to be done that just cannot be done by the contractors, or it would cost a fortune to have them done, done by contractors, and if uh, through you we can, um, I can get that answer from staff and just find out what exactly the issue is. Okay, Ms. Sullivan, there was the, um, the garbage truck and the communication, please. 
Yes, you can buy a garbage truck for $40,000. It seems, I thought it was a lot of money, uh, to be honest, but we're not talking, I think, of one of those Alpine trucks that you see driving around collecting um, residents' refuse. It's more for our parks uh, and public spaces that we're going to be collecting garbage, so we wouldn't need something of that big capacity. Sorry, on that, would it be then like a pickup truck sort of thing, or is it separate from the pickup truck that's... I'll defer to Mr. Howitt. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, through to Councillor Loggins. It would be what we're looking at as round figures. We're looking at something like a five ton truck that would serve multi purpose, including picking up garbage from the park sites to take to the dump. It's not like uh, Ms. Sullivan said, it's not your Alpine truck. So, what other services might it be doing? Picking up uh, or ha hauling equipment around, hauling. Uh, you know, tools and things like that, you know, uh, needed for washroom facilities and uh, just general park maintenance. It was so, sort of a, mu a multi-use truck, if you will, able to pull a trailer. So a truck to pull the trailer and a truck with, for modified for snowplow. So two trucks, pickup trucks? Yeah. Well, one would be a five-ton truck. One would be like a three-quarter ton truck. Okay. Uh, and then, I guess, uh, the second part was what the, uh, um, what were the sticky points, I guess, between us and the contractors uh, in relation to things that we need to get done that are not being serviced by the contracts? I think as uh, 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 Councillor Pearson alluded to, it's mostly turnaround times and meeting the demands of citizens before issues become real issues. Um, we hold a lot of liability with these contracts and because there are seven of them and they're very separate and disparate contracts, it's very difficult to manage the turnaround times and the service levels that we want to provide to the residents of Souk. Thank you. Councillor Casper, then Ray, then Berger. So, so just to follow up um, on Councillor Logan's question. Uh, the truck envisioned would also be used to haul away the grass clippings, I'm assuming, and branches, any debris, uh, anything that's associated with general uh, maintenance of um, the park that's next to us or one that's heavily wooded or treed, and there's a lot of underbrush to clear out, you know, for fire protection purposes or just if there's broken limbs that are down, then they have the ability to haul that away. Is that correct? That's correct. It's okay. a, a multi-use vehicle. Right. Um, and, uh, and in the event that these uh, full-time workers, um, if, if the district needed them to go and clean out a culvert at uh, uh, different locations because of heavy uh, rains and potential flooding, then they could dig out the culvert, clear it, and then put that debris on this truck, correct? That's correct, and it, it alleviates some of the wait time from our road maintenance contractor, and a lot of those type, type of things, uh, depending on the circumstances, uh, over and above the normal contract, we could get billed for that. So if we have our own services, a it, it's quickly remedied, and secondly, we're not we're not getting another bill for it. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to say as a friendly reminder to my colleagues here. Um, when I was on council between 205 and uh, 208, we had one contractor who looked after our parks. Um, we don't have many more parks than what we did then. Uh, it's now gone, uh, become uh, seven separate contracts. And what I've seen over the years is that um, it, it's become more of a management issue and it's, it's created potentially more problems for the district just from the peer management of all of these contracts, all of these individuals in a variety of locations uh, throughout uh, half the year. So to me, if, it's, if, if, if you can boil it down and make better utilization of resources that you have full control over and direct uh, for services throughout the year, it, it's going to be in the long run better off. It's targeted services. It's not seasonal services. Everything that's above in, in the background or is predominantly uh, seasonal by nature. Yes, there may be the odd occasion uh, where there's additional work in the fall or the, or the early spring, but, but I think that you know by going into a full-time, all-year-round service, we're going to provide a better service to the taxpayers. 
So that's why I'm going to support the recommendation. Do we have a motion? We don't, no. Well, I'll move the recommendation as outlined that um, uh, that the notice be given and that we'd establish a plan for bringing uh, the parks maintenance uh, services in-house uh, beginning January 1st, uh, 2017. And uh, the last part is uh, that uh, council authorized the CAO to hire uh, two, two additional FTEs and, and uh, seasonal employees uh, purchase, the require, purchase or lease the required equipment as outlined in, in this report uh, to conduct uh, parks maintenance. Um, so, so I, I Let, added... Let's get a seconder for the motion. Seconded by Councillor Ray. So, Council so, Council so I added the lease portion because it yeah. was mentioned in the report, so at least we have some options. Um, and, and, and the only question I have, uh, without getting into details in, in the motion, was at what point in time uh, does staff envision hiring uh, the two additional FTEs? The transition plan is such that we'd like to take over January 1st, so we'd be hiring the two additional FTEs um, in December so that we can have some transition time. Thank you. Okay, speaking to the motion then, Councillor Ray. Uh, yes, uh, just as a quick example, not long after I moved to Souk, I, we had a dead tree in our front yard. Um, I called the district and then I called them back about six weeks later because it hadn't been removed. And she said it would cost us $250 to have somebody remove it. So I said, okay, can I remove it myself, which I did. So I, I think there's a lot, there's probably a lot of those sort of small things that you, we don't realize that goes on in terms of the needs of the community and I think it would be quicker response time and I, and I do think um, money saved is always a good thing for the taxpayer so I'll be supporting it. Councillor Berger. Thank you. I just have one question um, to staff through you. Um, talks in the report about uh, pickup truck and snow plow. Don't we have a larger engineering truck and a snowplow already? We have an engineering truck uh, that is rigged for uh, snow clearing, uh, but the truck itself is sort of somewhat on its last legs right now. Uh, we'll probably be reassessing uh, that truck from a maintenance and uh, from a maintenance point of view to see how much longer or how much longer life we get we have for it. But uh, right now, we're just going through the motions of seeing exactly what we need. Okay, and then, then through you, um, so that's why it says four snowplow, because we're going to use our existing snowplow and sander that we have, that we had equipped on that truck. Excuse me? The, so it's, it just says uh, pick up modified four snowplow. So we, are, we still have own and we will use the snowplow that we have? As long as it, long as it keeps running, we'll, we'll keep using it until such time that it, we figure that maintenance costs get ahead of us and then we'll uh, have to pick up something else, whether we lease or buy. So. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I'd just like to echo, pretty much everybody touched on all of my notes here about what I had to say. Um, in my seven years when I first started on, on council, we did have one contractor that did it all. Um, then we moved to two or three local people, then we went to now our seven, which if we remember during our last service agreement change, a lot of them aren't local anymore. So going back to Councillor Loggins' comments, um, I absolutely agree with her. It would be great if, we, if some of those local people that did have their own business and where I know I, we had a couple of uh, contractors that did it on their own. I would love to see those people apply just to bring things back local and keep as many local people as we can. And of course, they have knowledge with what we, um, what we require. So, um, and I also agree with Councillor Pearson with regards to Christmas lighting and extras and overtures. I know that in those uh, maintenance contracts, that was always sort of the, the thorn is looking at all the extras, so thank you. Councillor Parkinson. Through you, Your Worship. Um, when it says establish a plan for bringing the parks maintenance service in-house, when will that plan be coming forward to Council? So we can see what is happening. Uh, through the Chair to Councillor Parkinson. I would probably bring the plan back to Council in November or earlier if we can. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion then? I'll call the question. All those in favour? Opposed? Councillor Parkinson is opposed. Thank you. 
Okay, um, next item of business is our reports for information. Um, RI1, our Mayor and Council verbal updates. Councillor Casper? Yeah, um, one thing I'd like to report on is the uh, Water Commission at our last meeting. Um, we actually came up with a compromise solution on access to the leach uh, lands and that um, instead of an outright prohibition that there will be a, an opportunity for uh, any member of the public or a group or organization to actually uh, fill out a request form outlining the reason why they want to enter the lands and what the purpose is and the time frame associated with that. Uh, they are required to carry out all the full responsibilities um, that, that um, uh, one would expect um, as, as a good steward of those lands. Uh, so that's the great Canadian compromise that we reached and uh, that's going to be going to the regional board. As I've noted before, um, this whole issue was almost, well it was a tie vote uh, for, for to implement the restrictions or to in fact um, grant some authorization. So hopefully the board will be considering this in, in June. So I just wanted to report on that. And the other thing I wanted to note is that there's been an announcement in regard to the uh, Highways Ministry doing a study in relation to Highways 14 options and I just wanted to bring it to Council's attention. In our library we have a document that goes back to 1991 when the government of the day actually commissioned a study on uh, Highway 14 route study View Royal to Souk and it's pretty inclusive and it deals with all kinds of issues so um, it's my hope and I, I think you know we support looking at this but you know, there's some good information here and I hope that the province remembers that they actually did a study in 1991. So anyway, I just thought I'd bring that to everybody's attention. Thank you, Councillor Casper. Any other reports, Councillor Parkinson? Um, on Wednesday, May 11th, I was invited to the age-friendly meeting to speak on the Regional Housing Trust Fund Commission they would like to know what it was about and whether they would have the opportunity to look at affordable housing and see if they could work together and get something done. I also um, attended the Regional Housing Trust Fund Commission on May 13th and we had the Tasauk Nation MOU meeting on the 19th. On May 22nd, I attended the Earthquake Sim Simulator, the Quake Cottage. and. Um, that was uh, very interesting. They had over 500 people go inside, and a third of the people that came were from outside of Souk. They came from Victoria to attend this, and they had a video playing once you were in it, and everything was strapped down so it didn't fall off and hit you. <laughs> and the youngest person to go in, it was three years old. So it was quite, quite interesting. Today we had our emergency planning committee meeting. They uh, pointed Rick McLeod as the acting ESS coordinator until the end of September. And um, they also said that they require direction from council on to who will take over that appointment come the end, end of September. And there was talk of muster points uh, signage and the neighborhood preparedness, emergency preparedness. They had 14 people sign up a few people from the Rotary Auction and then from the Quake Cottage. So people were interested in, in what was going on so that it's good to have those events. And they also got an MOU with the school district, 62 for emergency lodging and shelter. They had a meeting with the superintendent and all schools within the district are available for an emergency or a disaster. And that would be about it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Parkinson. Councillor Ray? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Your Worship. I attended the Crest Board on May the 18th, <clears throat> and uh, Crest is um, looking at uh, rolling out a, a new um, uh, bandwidth uh, for radios across uh, the South Island. Uh, oh, it'll be over about a five or a six year, almost 10 years in terms of the total. Um, they're also looking at pager and fire ground radios. 
and I'm attending a um, library board meeting in Nanaimo on Saturday and there was something else I was oh and in just in response to the highway 14 study uh, perhaps maybe the province can dust off the plans that were developed for the four lanes uh, north of the current souk road that goes back to the 70s I understand so lots of work's already been done hopefully yeah they can put something together any other comments from members of council Okay, I'll just uh, remind you all that the Health Summit is occurring this Saturday, 1 o'clock, at the Community Hall, and everyone is welcome to attend. I did have a featurette with Shaw TV. It was their Go, Go Shaw program, for lack of a better word, where I was interviewed on, on just the exciting things happening at Souk. So we were in the town centre at the boat launch um, in Sea Park, um, the reporter also was down on the boardwalk and it was just a uh, promo we also talked about the Pacific Marine Circle route it was sort of free-flowing so you you always um, with these you don't really have a script you just hope for the best when it goes live and and uh, I probably have to watch it about ten times before I can actually give myself constructive criticism that's useful but it is out there now and it's um, the intent was to just be very optimistic and cheerful about soup because we have so many great things happening here. So that's now on the website forever, but maybe that's a good thing. Um, you've all heard about the Highway 14 study. Um, there was discussions that I had with the minister himself a few years ago at UBCM, I believe, about a sign. And it was sort of as you go up island, you see a sign, you know what the conditions are for the Malahat. And I felt that was important heading out this way so that, you know, if there's flooding, a closure, if you know where there's a detour, because it's kind of anyone that does the commute or anyone that's driving this regularly, when you start to see everything slow down, you think, okay, is it a bus or whatever? And then gradually it just stops. And then you try to find out why this has happened. In my conversation with him, he said, oh, well, you can just look at Drive BC, of which I quickly said, oh, while you're driving, that doesn't seem like a good idea. And in many places, places, there is no cell coverage. You can't log on to it anyway. So the idea is just to give commuters options. It's a beginning. It's a start. It's not the end all. But at least you know what you need to do and what arrangements you need to make while you're driving home. And, and then, of course, um, with the announcement that Councillor Casper and, and Ray just alluded to, um, our CAO and I met with some ministry staff just to follow up, um, to keep conversation going now that we have been partnering together uh, they had indicated that the last time a sort of baseline assessment was done was 15 years ago so that was pre-incorporation and of course a lot of things have happened so those study will be occurring over the year um, perhaps if we can PDF some of these materials we have we can send them to this to the ministry just as a reminder that some of the work so hopefully it doesn't come back with basically an updated version of the same but uh, again at least there's some attention coming this way and that's about it. So on that note, um, that's everyone for updates. So our next item will be our I2, our CEO update. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, it's exciting times for Souk indeed. We've been getting a lot of media play with respect to real estate locally. And the word is on the street that it's the West Shore and Souk is where you want to buy because we have more affordable housing. Um, we are also getting a lot of interest from Vancouver, people retiring out of Vancouver wanting to come and enjoy our beautiful little town here in Waterfront. Uh, so if we think things are busy now, they're going to continue to get really busy. Um, and uh, I think uh, Mr. Howitt was telling me last week that our building permits are up about 70%. Uh, so it's a good problem to have. Uh, people are interested, and uh, we'll just continue doing the good things we're doing. That's all. Thank you very much. So we're, there's no new business. So our next is correspondence requiring action. C1 is new casinos for the Capital Regional District. There's a series of letters here, um, some that were sent out by, two sent out by the Mayor of View Royal in opposition. And we also discussed a while ago and sent our letter. This was last year, November 10th of 2015. And I believe recently in our correspondence, maybe there was a response from the BC Lottle Corp itself, sort of saying again why they were pro. 
So this was all here, and I'm wondering if, um, in regards to the more recent one from View Royal, did we want to send another response? Councillor Parkinson? I would like to move that Mayor and Council write a letter to the Premier and the Minister responsible expressing our opposition to BCLC plans for a second casino in Greater Victoria. Okay, is there a seconder? Second. Seconded by Councillor Casper. Any discussion on, on the motion? All right, I suppose just a question on the motion. It was Mayor on behalf of Council? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, see no other discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Um, to our corporate officer, acting corporate officer, if you could perhaps draft the letter, then I will sign it um, when it's ready this week. Thank you. Our next one is C2, the CRD bylaw number 4029, Souk and Electoral Area Recreational Facilities Established by Law. Councillor Casper's comments. Yeah, this has been an ongoing um, process with the Sea Park Recreation Commission. And um, in order for the bylaw to be approved, um, which consolidates uh, two functions into one function, it gives the Commission uh, greater flexibility to, um, to uh, do their budget process, to actually make expenditures for providing uh, recreational services, which is what they're mandated to do. So after saying that, I will move that the Council of the District of Souk gives consent to the adoption of bylaw number 4029, Souk and Electoral Area Recreation and Facility Service Establishment Bylaw number 1216. It's also on the screen ad. On the screen added in accordance with section 346. Would you agree with that? Uh, if it's if it's required, but you know, I don't know if it is in fact required, but it's but required. I don't mind it being added. No, there's no problem to take it out. We just did a motion in advance for yeah. council's convenience, but okay. whatever you like. So anyway, that's that's a motion that I would support. Okay, is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Berger. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? Okay, carried unanimous. Sorry, Councillor Ed. That's good. Okay, sorry I didn't see your hand there. Okay, next is correspondence for information. I won correspondence from May the 12th to 18. Um, there was a few, a member of the public, Mr. Bateman, brought forward a, um, regarding the Canada 150 Community Infrastructure Program, a call for proposals. The one of a charging station here is is of interest. Um, I'm not sure with some of the others if they fit into the work plan if we started adding them. I'm not certain, Ms. Sullivan or Mr. Blackall. Uh, yeah, I did look into the uh, you know the projects that fit into the the grant criteria and. For the infrastructure component, they were talking mainly about renovations to existing infrastructure, so it may not fit that program, but we definitely would look, of course, to other grants if, if that's the wish of Council to have a, a charging station there. We have discussed it at the uh, Climate Change Committee. Okay. Councillor Casper? Uh, Councillor Berger can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, C Park is actually pursuing or looking at a charging station, correct? So they so they have some information as as to what could or could not be done. Great, that's good. Um, there was a letter, an email I received, so I sent it on to the commission. So that's a, it's a good location for one because mm -hmm. open seven days a week, public washroom facilities. Um, but a lot of municipalities do host the stations as well, so we would have a few of them spread throughout the district. Any discussion on the motion? Um, you may have noticed um, there is a, a piece about the roundabout and there is a lot of interest in having the loggers pole relocated back into town. Uh, I like the idea. It's something to think about when the roundabout, um, when I think the Supro Arts is going to be doing a more in-depth view on it or even if there's another area where it could be relocated in town. So it's something to think about. Any other comments on the correspondence? The motion to receive, oh, please. Yes. Ebony. So, oh, Rick. Sorry. Yes. Uh, there was a letter in, in regard to lands adjacent to the Wanda Fuca Trail, and 
and recently I think the province announced yep. that they had actually purchased those lands um, and or, or they had announced that they are in fact going to annex them to that park. Yes. From what I understood in the media reports. I did read that in the in the Times column. Yes. So your microphone wasn't on. Okay. Councillor Loggins? Um, one of the pieces of correspondence is um, from Bob Phillips, Chair of the Board of Education, regarding transportation. Um, I don't know if we sent something similar, but I think that uh, it is echoing what we have said to them before in person when they've come to Council. So it would be... Um, I would like to make a motion that we send a similar letter um, that Mayor, on behalf of Council, send a letter uh, to Susan Bryce, Chair of the Victoria Regional Transit Commission, echoing the same uh, motion that the School District 62 has done. Okay. Is there a seconder? Second. Seconded by Councillor Parkinson. Any discussion on sending the letter? Councilor Can I Ray? just, I'm sorry, what page are, were we on? It's uh, the first letter from May 10th from the school, Souk School District. School District. So 79. Yeah. For more bus service out to Souk. Oh. Yeah. Yep, no, that's a great idea. Uh, call the question on the motion. All those in favor? Opposed, carried unanimously. And as for the rest of the correspondence, a motion to receive then, please. So moved moved by Councillor Pearson and seconded by Councillor Parkinson. All those in favor? Opposed, carried unanimously. And then a motion to adjourn, please. Okay. Moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Casper. All those in favor? Oh, pardon me. And then the second part, I'll call the question on. It should have been amended, motion to adjourn and to re go back in camera. Is that friendly? Okay, all those in favor, opposed, <laughs> carried unanimously. All right, thank you very much.